I'm gonna tell you about this time where this guy had a girlfriend that was a guard and he was prostituting her out. In but prison. this happened in prison. This, yeah, he prostituted her out while she was in prison. She's a prison guard. And he's on one side, the adults are separate from the YOs, the youthful offenders. Okay. But we worked together. So I was working in the laundry. He told me who she was, a very pretty woman. And 10 packs of Newports would have got you whatever you needed. So I told my roommate about it. He went to the canteen, which is where we get our food and all our supplies from, got 10 packs of Newports and literally tried her. And he came out of that back stall happy as hell. I know that much. I'll take this minute out, maybe you don't, to teach you how to beat a DUI. You're going to tell us how to beat a DUI? Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you how to beat a DUI. Now, this is for someone that's actually driving while drunk? Yes. So, keep a bottle, a fifth, a third, a pint, whatever you want, inside your car while you're driving. Yeah, definitely seal. So, what happens? I mean... So, when uh, you see the blue lights and you pull over, take your keys and throw them in a the glove box. Take out the bottle, and when the officer approaches the window, crack that bottle and start drinking right in there so his body cam can see you. So, you mean outside the vehicle start drinking? Or when he goes right up to the window and you start drinking then. Well, here's what I'm thinking, though. If you throw your keys in the glove box and stay in the car, they could still say you were in control of the vehicle. I wonder if it would be a better idea if you got out of the car, locked the keys in the car, and then drank. Yeah, you, yeah, that'd probably be a better idea. That'd probably be a Man, better I idea. Man, I never thought of this before. How do they prove you were drinking while driving and you didn't, and that you didn't get drunk until... After you got out of the car and quit driving. Checkmate. Write that down. Hey, are you recording me? Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. doing a little bit of recording. I didn't give you permission to record me, man. You want to ask me some questions? You know how much time I did already? I've time? I've 15 years of my life behind bars. Like in prison? Like, like in prison. Is that where you got those tattoos? That's exactly where I got these tattoos. Dude, well, I didn't know that before I turned on the camera, bro. I'm just kidding, man. You want to do an interview? Yeah. All right. Man. Sometimes, you know, you're guilty by association. Shady, like drug stuff? Yeah. Like prostitution? No, just drugs. Drugs? Yeah, so. Is it homeless people? Homeless people. And so I um, ended up being followed by the police. Well, I I got emboldened and started ditching them. Like every turn I would I would take, I'd see two or three, I'd see cars trailing me. Now, it's always, it was always the same ones. Out of state tags, um, four door Jeep Wrangler, a white Tesla. So um, you, you think it was police in these cars? Oh yeah, uh, it was some type of law enforcement. I, I don't know exactly which type it was because uh, their their honestly, their presence was known, but their affiliations weren't. Did they ever say anything? How often did they actually reach out to you and speak to you? None. And every time I approached them, um, they wouldn't look me in the eye and they'd stare straight down in the ground. I I have, I have quite a few incidences. Uh, I had a friend over at the other racetrack right there on uh, East Bay mm -hmm. gas station, and she she's a shift manager. And I was talking to her, and she asked me to tell me a little bit more about myself. And I noticed that there was a gentleman wearing black shirt, black glasses, and a hat slung low over his head, stirring the coffee at the stir station for almost five minutes. So it's not too many people in the stores. Obviously, he's eavesdropping on my conversation. So I say, sure. Um, once upon a time, there was a gentleman stirring his coffee for five minutes too long, eavesdropping. The minute I say that, now she's waiting on her, her boyfriend to come and get her. I'm just hanging out with her. So the minute I say that, he goes and buys his coffee and leaves. A few minutes later, her boyfriend shows up, and then she leaves, and I leave behind her. Well, that gentleman turned out to be at the church parking lot right across the street from there. The only car in the parking lot, in the center of it. Well, as I'm riding my bike out, he's next to the sidewalk, maybe about 15 yards away from this Tesla. And he's just looking at me. I thought that was a little creepy. So I bend the corner. So I go back and he's inside the Tesla. Big, huge parking lot. I literally circle this guy's Tesla on my bicycle like a hungry shark circles a diver. And you know what he does? What do you do? Stares at the steering wheel and doesn't even look up at me. Doesn't acknowledge me, doesn't say nothing. Did you consider so, knocking on the window and saying, excuse me, sir, how are you today? Uh, do you mind if I ask if you're affiliated with law enforcement, anything like that? No, no, I didn't do that. It was, it was the, the whole vibe was creepy, man. 
There was another time there was a rally straight here on Elmerton Road down toward the Clearwater Lago Airport. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting on the ledge. It's about 10 o'clock at night. And by this time, I'd noticed I'd been trailed for about three weeks. By different vehicles? Yeah, they were all, they were, it was, it was, most of them were the same, but they were all out of state tags. Okay. And as a matter of fact, I used to do uh, side work for the 7 Eleven on East Bay, Missouri. And this gentleman came in. He was a black, a black guy, looked like one of the first 48 detectives. Nice pimp suit, hat, the whole nine yards. Cop off rip. So I, as he's leaving, I said, Can I ask you a question, sir, before you leave? He said, Yeah, hurry up. And he bought some Fantasy Five tickets. And this is what, this, this is the second day when I realized I was being followed. Well, I turned around and he said, yeah, come on, hurry up. I, I got things I got to do. So he's opening the door, but he's got his wallet open. I see a U.S. Marshal badge inside of his wallet. I said, are you, are you a detective? He said, yeah, but not the kind you think I am. Well, I don't even know how to say what, what to say to that. Uh, do you know anything about me? He said, yeah, you, I don't know anything about. I didn't ask no more questions. I left it at that and just kind of like. So you thought it was a cop surveilling you. Right. <clears throat> you found out it was someone in law enforcement. He disclosed that to you, but claimed to not be watching you or know anything about you. Yeah, uh, apparently that's yeah. So I, it was it was completely all of it was like really creepy and odd. So I would lose them at every turn. Like I, I ride a bike, they drive cars. I'm on the main road. You know what I mean? I can ditch you really fast. You know what I mean? I, I pedal fast. I build bikes. You know what I mean? That's my that's my thing. I love to do that. Build so, bicycles. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I had a specialized, it's a pretty expensive model. Um, and I ditched them, and, and this is how I know I was being followed. I ditched them on Lake Avenue. Lake is real dark. The street, all lake, lake is dark, completely dark. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. There's yeah. no street lights. Right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. so I ditch them on Lake, and I, and I slide up behind, beside this apartment complex. Well, the, the, the nightlife with the, with the lights and all just starts going. The engines start revving. You, you, it, it's obvious that they, they lost their target and they were looking for me. So I said, okay, now I, now I got the information I need. You know what I mean? So I get back out onto the main road and they slow down. They slow down towards me and just keep looking at me like this. And then surveillance doubled up for a couple of days and then it backed off again. I, I, I'm, how many times, I'm observing, so I pay attention. How many times have these people who you thought were surveilling you actually ask you for identification? Oh, they, they never did any of that. But you know, the one thing about it was is I never had any police interaction during that whole time. None, not once, whatsoever. When's the last time you were arrested? Uh, just recently. I uh, So this whole thing came to an end. Um, my bike had gotten taken. Uh, one of the guys, I believe it was one of the guys in the trucks, I chained it to itself at a store in Pennells Park. And uh, I was in there for 30 seconds. I grabbed a drink. I came out. The bike, my Cannondale was gone. Um, there would have been the, One of the trucks wouldn't follow me all day. You know, He wasn't following me no more. So I, I just kind of... I kind of snapped, and, and next thing you know, I ended up in jail. Uh, they dropped the charges 30 days later. And What was the charge? It was three of them. It was four of them, actually. One of them was a misdemeanor. The other three were felonies. Uh, they dropped them all? Yeah. You had I, three felonies dismissed. Not, listen, yes. And this is not. And I've been to prison five times, by the way. 